guys and welcome back to my channel this video is going to be about cold processed soap making essentials that you need and how you can add herbs into your batter i did not make a video specifically teaching you how to make cold processed soap making because i have a full course on this so it doesn't make sense for me to make those type of videos on youtube However, I, you guys know I am the type to give, give, give. If you've seen any of my other videos, my state board, um, esthetician exam, prep video, always give something free. And then um, if you need something more in depth, you can get the in depth classes. But I'm still giving like great gems right now. This video is going to teach you about the things that you just absolutely need when you're making cold processing. Um, I notice I do teach I do teach classes, so I notice that sometimes people. Even though I give them a list, they still don't necessarily know what to get, where to get it from. So I'm here to give you some tips. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first and foremost, let's talk about safety. Because when you're making cold processed soap, you know that you are working with lye. So you know that lye is a caustic material and it can burn your skin. So let's go ahead and cover the safety issues really very quickly. You need gloves, you need um, some type of long sleeves. I'm going to put on my, um, my medical scrubs jacket. You're gonna need some type of gloves. So the gloves need to be kitchen gloves. They need to come all the way up here to cover your arm. Even though you're gonna have on long sleeves, it just gives you extra protection. You need goggles, okay? Speaking of goggles, I don't even think I have goggles at my shop. I've had to transition all my stuff from my home to my shop, so it's been a lot. But anyway, so you're gonna need goggles. You're gonna need long pants. Do not wear shorts, okay? And also make sure that you wear closed toe shoes. You do not want to wear clothing that you care about because you're gonna get yourself messy and you're working with chemicals. So you just wanna be safe. Make sure that you cover your eyes, make sure you cover your arms, make sure you cover your legs. Do not get lye on your skin. If you get lye on your skin, you will burn, okay? So let's go ahead and get into the actual materials that you need to make soap in the cold process method. All right, so you will need oils and butters. I will help you figure out where to get these items at the end of this, but know that you will need oils and butters. You're gonna need carrier oils. This can be examples of coconut oil, shea butter, almond oil. There's so many different oils out there. I am not talking about essential oils. Essential oils are what you use for fragrance if you want to use a natural fragrance. So. Once again, carrier oils are oils and butters. They have fatty acids in them and essential oils are extracted from plants. Those are very potent. Those can burn your skin. Those are completely different from carrier oils, okay? So you're going to need your oils and butters. You gotta pick what you want that's on you. Look up the different oils, oil properties for that to figure out what type of oils you wanna use and how it will affect your soap. So in this recipe, we have shea butter, we have coconut oil, palm oil, hemp seed oil, grape seed oil, and that's it. That's all of the oils that we have in this recipe. The next thing you're going to need is bowls. You're going to need a big bowl to put your batter in. This big bowl I got from Amazon. Um, it has six quarts on it. So you're going to need something this big for your batter. You're going to you're going to need measuring cups, at least two measuring cups. You want to have one big one for your water, one average sized one for your lye, and for the batter when I am separating the herbs or the colors, I use these and I got them from Dollar Tree, okay? I just split my batter in these two different bowls. So you're gonna need bowls. You're gonna need bowls. You can get them from Amazon, you can get them from Walmart, you can get them from Dollar Tree. Just make sure you have a lot of different sizes of measuring bowls. You're going to need spatulas because sometimes you're gonna need to mix manually and not with the stick blender. You're also going to need a stick blender. When you plug this in, and you press the start button, this spins and it will mix your batter very quickly. 
If you do it by hand, it'll take you forever. But sometimes I like to mix between the two because I may not necessarily want to accelerate my batter very quickly. I don't want it to get too thick. So I'll step in with my spatulas. So you're gonna need both. You're going to need a soap mold. You can use a soap mold like this, which is the average one. Um, it ends up being a really big loaf that you can cut or they have several different other ones that you can use that are bigger. I've only used these. Sometimes people pour their batter into the decorative molds. I find that to be more difficult with cold process, so I don't do it as much. You're going to need fragrances or essential oils to scent your soap. In this recipe, we're using cinnamon essential oil. I remember when I tried to use cinnamon in powder form and it accelerated my batter very quickly. So I decided to use essential oil, but I still have to use the droplets and I only do like one or two drops because this is very strong. This is from Essential Depot. Essential Depot is a very quality brand company for soap making. They have very quality potent products. So this is cinnamon. Cinnamon is just a product that accelerates your soap anyway, so you have to be very careful with cinnamon. But I'm making a oatmeal and rose hip soap i want it to smell like cinnamon you are going to need powdered form herbs okay i'm going to show you how you put these in your soap but this is important because this is a big part of this video you want to use powder that comes from reputable companies this is from crafter's choice i think i got it from wholesale supplies plus.com but any type of herb that you want to put in your soap, it's best to put it in powder form because it goes straight into the oils and butters. You can mix it with the spatula, you can mix it with the stick blender, and it works really, really well. Look for everything in powder form. Sometimes people like liquid. I have some issues with some liquids. It, I don't know how it's going to react in my soap, so I use powder form. But even with that, like I said, with the cinnamon, you still have to know the product, research it, and see how it's going to affect your cold process soap because you know that it is a chemical reaction, okay? We have rose hip has one of the herbs, and then we have oatmeal is going to be the other um, property that we're putting in the soap. I have oat flour. I like that it's grinded up. I can just pour it right in there. I like to use these little cups I got from Target to, to put my herbs in, and then I like to put it in from there. You're going to need soap cutters. You can cut them with uh, the straight one. If you cut them with the ridge one, it will make them ridged on the sides. I like that because I think it gives the soap character. And then you're gonna need a soap cutter. These soap cutters can range from 30 to 200, $300. This is a very cheap one, it's like $30. You can set it where you wanna set it. You want it to cut two inches, you put it on two inches. You put the um, cutter in and you cut it for that length and that's how you get the bar so these are the absolute things that you need i don't think i missed anything yes i did you absolutely need distilled water distilled water is a necessity when you're making any type of cosmetics you want to use distilled water because it is free from metals and toxins and all that stuff so it's safe for your products so distilled water you can get from any grocery store any market they should have distilled water unless they're sold out. Last but not least, you need lye. This is a food grade lye from a central depot. Um, food grade means that it has less metals in it. So a lot of soap makers like this and this is a soap maker company. You can also get lye from Amazon. I trust the central depot. So this is who I use. Okay guys, so I'm supposed to have on long sleeves. I did not put my scrub jacket on. Please do not do that. Wear long sleeves, but also wear these long gloves that I have on. I am measuring out the lie right now. Make sure that you always click tear on your measuring scale so that you are getting the value of what's actually going inside of your measuring cup and not the weight of your measuring cup itself, okay? So I am measuring right now, and then I'm going to go outside so that the fumes do not go up my nose and do not fill the room when I mix the distilled water with the lye. Okay, I'm outside of my shop. We have all the oils and butters that I have measured out. We have my measured out lye, which is also known as sodium hydroxide. 
and we have the distilled water. Now, you must remember, always enter lye into water. Never water into lye, okay? And it's the same thing once you mix everything together, you put that lye solution inside of your oils and butters. You do not put your oils and butters inside of your lye solution, okay? So I am going to pour out my lye into the water. I like to pour it over the top of the spatula so that it helps it to guide it directly down into, into the water without it splashing everywhere. This just keeps it very safe. So I am mixing and mixing, and I want you to know that I'm supposed to have a laser temperature gun. I do not have it, but I've been doing this long enough to know that it's always at 200 degrees Fahrenheit when I finish mixing this solution, okay? I just want to make sure all the clumps are gone. And now I'm going to pull the last solution into my oils, my oils and butters, and know that since it's 200 degrees Fahrenheit, it will melt down these oils and butters on its own. If you want to sit there with your spatula and just keep mixing, not just thick blender because that's too much your, your spatula and keep mixing until it melts you can but I like to kind of break them up in pieces um, as I'm mixing and let them just mix down and then I'm going to take you guys inside so I can really mix it up all right y'all I'm a little pressed for time and I do this every single time <laughs> I forgot to put my essential oil in the bowl so I want to use this metal bowl you can get it from Amazon to put my essential oil in. Um, like I said, I'm only gonna use a drop. So I have these droppers I'm gonna use to measure it out. We're only gonna use, like I said, we're only gonna use like two drops of this because this stuff is like super strong. So I'm gonna use like literally one and a half drops of the cinnamon essential oil. And I make sure I don't want it to eat through those cups. So I'm using the metal cups for that. And then my herbs. I usually measure them out to um, a teaspoon, right? Either one teaspoon or two teaspoons, depending on how much I want. Right now, I'm going to eyeball it because I kind of pretty much know what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and just eyeball it. And I got to hurry up because... I have this stuff sitting here and it needs to be mixed with the um, stick blender. Okay, so let me go ahead and bring this over so y'all can see what I'm doing. Excuse any junk that you see, because like I said, I now have my, my studio space as um, also the place that I have to make soap. So I have to like alternate and hide stuff and I don't have much storage. Okay, so we have the stick blender here. We have our herbs and this is not finished. So I have just put, you know, I already put the live water into this mix. Um, one thing you can do is, so know that as soon as uh, you mix that live with that water, it's gonna be 200 degrees immediately. So what I like to do is I like to get my spatula and just go ahead and um, start mixing it from there and get any of the big blocks out. If I have big blocks of shea butter or coconut oil, the lye will be so hot that it will melt it down for me. So I just take the spatula. Um, if you use the stick blender, it's not going to blend properly because you have big chunks. So you want to try to get those big chunks down to smaller pieces. As you can see, it's melting, melting slowly. If you want to speed up this process, you can microwave I'll say for like a couple seconds at a time because you remember that your lye is going to be 200 degrees so you don't want your, your oils to be already like super hot before you put lye in there. But I am allowing it to kind of naturally happen and then I'm going to go ahead and add the stick blender. <laughs> Alright, so what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to separate my batter. I don't measure it out in any way. I just separate the batter because I want to create swirls. And I'm going to use oatmeal in one bowl and I'm going to use the um, rose hip in the other bowl. And it just creates a swirl, but it also gives you both of the benefits at the same time. Just, you know, creates a nice little design. I also added my essential oil before I split the batter. 
Okay guys, I want you to know that I created a very thin trace. As soon as I got to trace, I went ahead and added my cinnamon essential oil because it can accelerate the batter extremely fast. So another thing, when you have little crumbles like this, you can put your stick blender back in and clear it out. But know that whenever you use your stick blender on electricity, it will thicken the batter. So keep that in mind so I didn't do that too, too much. When your batter is too thick, you cannot really create the swirls that you want. All right, guys, so pay attention to how I'm doing this. This is a gem. Like, you're, you're not getting the class, but you're still getting gems, okay? So this is how I create my swirls. I take one part of the batter, and I pour it in, and then I pour the other batter in, and I just keep going back and forth until I have everything filled out in the, in the whole mold. And then I take skewers, and I go through, and I create the swirls, and then I kind of hit the mold on the table to kind of settle it. And that's it. And then the next day I cut it up. I'm outside in a damn jeep. Right outside. TT. Two turn baby girl, you know me. Still with the dolls that I grew beside. All the niggas proud. I let it die. Gotta watch the time cause it's flying right by. I'm outside in a damn Shorty off a fan star Just the one I'm ready It's a pressure Way that I've been living I'm conventional I'm just trying to make it To the end, you know Certain things have started Getting pissed off Think we need to have A sudden pressure I was recording This whole time I didn't record anything That's so annoying So basically I have my soap cutter Set on two and a half I've tightened it here and I have removed this soap mold, this soap loaf here from this soap mold. I removed it from the silicone. And thankfully I didn't start cutting and I realized I wasn't even recording. So this is my, my loaf and you see how it looks. Okay. So we're gonna enter it here because we have the cutter here, right? So we're gonna enter from this way. Make sure it's even, straight across. Like I said, I like to use my ridged soap cutter. And it goes straight down that hole. I pull it up. And here we have our soap. So this is gonna go through the gel phase, I believe, and it's gonna the brown is probably gonna be darker. But you see it comes out in nice swirls. All right, so here we have our finished product. These are the cut bars. And then when I wrap them, I do shrink wrap and I put labels on them. And I have another video coming out for how I package my soap. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, leave comments, ask questions. If you wanna see any other type of soap making videos besides just completely teaching you, because I can't, I got the course. Let me know. Comment below. Thanks for watching, y'all.